Hey you going, you legends? I hope you've found time over the last month to smash through some telly and watch some fucking movies. Here are me recommendations for November. Number one, The Martian. It's been a pretty solid month at the cinema. I saw Creed yesterday. That was fucking good shit. And The Martian, this was just sensational. What I'm most overjoyed about is the fact Ridley Scott has just knocked one out of the park. I've been thinking he's overrated as a director for like a good decade, so yeah, nah, I fucking said that, but it's sensational to see him just, yeah, smash it with this one. And it's not a big action Hollywood blockbuster, you know? It's suspenseful in the third act, and it's probably because we really give a shit about the characters. It's it's a drama film, it's a, it's a subtle drama fucking survival film with some very nice shades of comedy as well. I love the theme of isolation from humanity. It's just, it's a sensational theme. It's one of Matt Damon's most down-to-earth and sincere performances, which is kind of ironic. You gotta send him away from fucking everyone to, to really get that out of him. But the bastard made me choke up and tear up at about fucking three times, I think. So, yeah, check out The Martian. It's sensational stuff. Uh, next one, number two, Fargo Season 2. This is brilliant. I loved Season 1. If you haven't watched Season 1, you gotta watch Season 1. Season 2, tonally very similar. This is what makes Fargo, is, is the tone, the characters, and the plot. It's got the fucking quintessential bloody Coen Brothers quirky characters who are still yet quite relatable and, and humane. I don't know how they do that. They seem fucking wacky as fuck, yet yeah, there's, there's something very... Very, uh, yeah, just humane about the characters in, in the Fargo series. One of my favourite things in it is probably uh, Angus Sampson. He's an Australian comedian. He used to be on improv comedy shows like Thank God You're Here. And he's got acting chops. He's got real acting chops. His character uh, is, is creeping up to be quite something, I reckon. Uh, and Kirsten Dunst, she's fantastic in it. She's fucking scatterbrain all over the place and quite terrifying. Uh, so that's Fargo Season 2, thoroughly enjoying that. Recommendation number three, Beasts of No Nation. Now this is Netflix's first feature film, and I just love Netflix doing feature films. Anything that saves me going to the cinema every now and again, having to listen to people chomp down on their fucking chips and popcorn, having to smell their feet if they take their shoes off, anything that saves that uh, is and goes straight to fucking streaming release is good. I like it, alright? We spend all our money on home entertainment systems. Let me stay the fuck home and watch something. So I like that Netflix is now doing direct to streaming feature films. And Beasts of No Nation is a very intense start. It's about child soldiers in Africa. The main kid we follow, his village gets overrun by fucking war and fighting. Um, and then he goes off, runs off and ends up being recruited as a child soldier to join the fight against who the fuck knows. He, does, he doesn't really know, he doesn't totally understand, he's just recruited and he's made to be fucking angry because all his family were killed. It, it's, it's, what's great is that we get to watch a totally different way of life, but it's still very relatable. That could be your family, that could be anyone's family. So the film does a really good job at making you connect and give a shit. And it's intense, but it's good reality drama intense. Uh, recommendation number four, Spy. This is outright comedic fun. It's from the same director who did Bridesmaids, which was sharp as fuck. So this is once more very sharp comedy. Uh, it's Obviously it's taking the piss out of the spy genre. It's not about your suave, charming, highly skilled, flawless male characters. Uh, it's about an everyday hero, someone who usually works at a desk in the CIA and she's played by fucking Melissa McCarthy. Uh, her name is Susan Cooper. Basically the plot is all the big CIA, suave, highly skilled male agents became, become known by supervillain Rose Byrne, so they have to lay low. Susan Cooper gets sent out into the field and she fucking kicks it in the dick. Does an amazing job. So it's, it's your fish out of water comedy. You, you're a fish out of water holiday comedy. Um, and it's really fucking good. It delivers. I also love Jason Statham because they got a big a big cliche action star, but he takes the piss out of himself so well. You can tell he's having so much fun doing it. His character does nothing productive. Everything he does 
fucks shit up even more. The, <laughs> no character arc, no change, nothing. You could tell he loved it. It's, it's really, it's a solid comedy. Here's what we do. I go into the face-off machine, get a whole new face. Do you have quarters? Because it costs 50 cents. Well, go pay. No, because it doesn't exist. Uh, recommendation number five. No one knows about Persian cats. I've been on a roll watching rock documentaries lately, I tell ya. And this one was a goodie. It's set in Tehran, Iran. And it's about young folk just trying to make the music that they want to make. Uh, it's an interesting style because it's between documentary, but it goes into kind of... Uh, written narrative drama at times. It uses real musicians, uh, real Iranian musicians, many of whom have moved to the fucking US and the UK to pursue careers because you have to have a fucking license uh, in Tehran, in Iran, a music permit uh, to make music. So uh, a lot of people fuck off internationally to, to do what they want to do. Um, and the film is good because it, it doesn't or it can't or it shouldn't go into Middle Eastern politics too much, so it ends up being very powerful because it's just about people trying to make fucking music. Uh, everything from indie folk uh, to alternative rock to blues, kind of soft rock. Yeah, it's really good. I'll put a playlist to the, the soundtrack for the film in the description below. Just go through that playlist. The music is excellent. Uh, it's a top rock documentary. Ends up being quite powerful in the end as well. <laughs> Anyway, look, those are me November recommendations. As usual, I fucking smash through telly and cinema uh, on a daily, daily basis and fucking love it. So, yeah, hope some of those you, you check out and you enjoy as well. Thanks very much. See ya.